Hello, I'm Otto, and welcome to, eh, we're going to call this episode 20, what are we in, 25? We're going to call this episode 25.5, because I recorded the next episode, and uh, that's advanced oil processing, and I, you know what, at some point I kind of jumped into combinators, and then it kind of hit me after. I didn't explain anything about the combinators, so I'm going to grab some of these um i am not gonna save this so uh whatever episode 25 into 26 looks like is probably still how it's gonna look so um we have these three combinators we've got uh the constant combinators uh, we've got a constant combinator we've got a decider combinator and we've got an arithmetic combinator um, so what is the purpose of these? So the purpose of these is, well, the constant combinator sends out a constant signal. Uh, so if we were to put this next to our interconnected tower, uh, let's say we attach this to a green wire. Um, so what, what kind of signals can we send out? Well, we can literally send out any, any icon pretty much in the game. Uh, and then we can send out uh, quantities for those icons as well. So like, let's say that we were sending out a stone signal. Um, we can set up how much of a stone signal we want. And if we scroll over the power tower, we now have 10, th you know what, just let's make this, let's do a hundred because this is going to make this a little bit easier. Um, so now you can see it's sending out a signal of a hundred. Now, what is the difference between this sending out a signal of a hundred and uh, let's say a chest sending out its own signal. So I'm going to toss 65 in there and connect that. So now when we scroll over it, we have 165. So we have a natural 65 coming out of here and an uh, artificial 100 coming out of here to boost the signal to 165. So that is generally what the constant combinator is doing. Um, you can also have a negative so now it's showing minus 35 because the 100 minus uh, the 65 here is going to give us a negative number. And this is something that we can eventually use to our advantage. Uh, you can set like quantities that you want in the constant combinator and have that sum with what is actually being sent to give you like a number, for instance, to bring in. Like, let's say that you wanted to bring in a certain amount of materials. You want to have um, 10,000 of something. You could have situations where you've set up what you want versus what you have and send a signal out for what you actually want to bring in, which is the difference between the two. So that's what a constant combinator does. It also, uh, I mean, it doesn't have to be an actual item. It can be... Uh, like I said, it can just be, uh, you know what, slash, right? Like, this can be anything. Uh, you have to be careful, though, because there are some signals, like a, a lot of the littered uh, signals, that could potentially interfere with things later on. Um, but in general, that is the constant combinator. We have just been using them to kind of display our icons for things that we want. Um... I should probably talk about the arithmetic uh, arithmetic combinator next. So what does the arithmetic combinator do? Well, it does calculations. So it will perform any of these functions here. Uh, it'll multiply, it'll divide, add, subtract, percentages, all like the power of, like all of this different stuff, right? Um, one of the things that I generally use it for is if I kind of have a similar setup to what I had earlier, I could say have no, that is not what I wanted. Um, I could have this reading so I could have this reading the quantity and I could tell it, okay, so it has a green signal of stone coming in um, this is a, this is basically a, a, well, here you go. It evaluates the condition for each input signal individually. 
uh, to pass completely, a signal has to pass all conditions. Output every signal that passed all conditions. So this is reading each of the signals that come through. And in this case, it's only reading stone. So we can say, for instance, each, and then multiply this. Uh, let's just use the same example that we had before. So I'm gonna do minus one. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna take the output or the input and convert it into, let's just say each again. And now this is converting each item or each signal, which is just one right now, times negative one. And it's gonna output whatever the product is of this. For each signal um, so now you can see if we hook this up it needs power there we go so now if we scroll over this you can see that it is set to minus 65 um, we can then use for instance the constant combinator uh, the constant can either be placed in the uh, output here or it can be placed uh, in a way that sets it up to the tower. doesn't really matter. And using the same example, we can set our stone to 100. Uh, so now you can see we have 35. So we have 65 in here. And we're saying 100 constantly sent out. And it's this is creating the difference between the two. Uh, and you can see had this been set up this way, it's still going to give us the same outcome. So this does not have to be placed on the, the tower. This can be hooked up to the combinator itself. Um, so that gives us the difference. So we could use this as an example to request in, say, 35 stone, or the difference between what we have versus what we want, right? Um, then the other combinator that we're going to talk about which is the decider combinator uh it's kind of does what it you know what uh it sounds like it does it it makes the decisions it determines if something something so like if stone let's say is less than so say that we wanted to request in once we were halfway so we're requesting in we want 100 total We've gotten halfway there. Now we can send a signal through the decider. Uh, let's just say that because we've got 65. Okay, so we're, we're working backwards here. Um, so we have 35, a signal of 35, which is 35 missing in this case. So if the stone signal is greater than 50, so we are missing more than half. Um, then output, uh, it doesn't really matter. Whatever signal we end up wanting. Um, you have to be careful, though, because we have this signal coming out here. So if we were to keep this entire circuit network contained, then we could just, for instance, use the stone signal again and maybe output... I don't know, one or output the uh, input quantity, um, in which case we would see uh, let's just do one. What? What did I? Oh, did I not attach this to the right thing? I did. Ah, whatever. Oh, that's because it, the condition isn't met. Oh, my goodness. Um, okay, so let's just do the input quantity. Anyways, you can see how this can be a little confusing. Uh, that was my bad. So it only performs something if the conditions are met. It would only perform this if the conditions were met. So if we had a situation where it was like this, once it was... Uh, stone is greater than the halfway point for us and then output the quantity. Um, the output signal would not exist until it got to 50, as an example. Um, there's a lot of different things that we can use the combinators for. The reason why I kind of, kind of wanted to just go over this briefly, just to kind of show you some of them, is because we do use them in the next episode. 
uh, we use some decider combinators to kind of limit how much of the fluids are going into certain sections. So um, just a quick little bonus video in between. Uh, I'm going to end it there and I will see you in the next episode, which is 26 coming out uh, later today. And thanks for watching.